Send it. Hit. Put another on it. One more? Yep. Send it. Hit. Nice shooting, little girl. Send it. On it. Send it. There you go. Thank nice you. shot, Jess. Send it. Got it. Nice shot, Jess. Yep. On it. Yeah. Send it. Got him. Nice shot, Jake. Hey guys, Sam Miller from Panel Precision. This is my son, Jake. Welcome back to Straight Talk. Okay, in this episode of Straight Talk, we're gonna go over the video equipment that we use to, to film long range bullet trace. I get a lot of questions about uh, what do you use to get that kind of footage. So uh, today we'll, we'll show you the specific uh, cameras that we use, as well as how we mount them on tripods and how we use a spotting scope uh, with the camcorder to make sure that we can spot hits while we're getting good trace video. I'll also show you how to set up behind the gun to get the best footage possible. Okay, let's start off with the camera that's actually uh, filming this right now, the video camera that I'm using to make this video. And that is a Canon Vixia HF G30. And the whole reason I bought this camera was so that I could use an external microphone. Uh, the two smaller camcorders I've been using for bullet trace are flat out worthless for sound if you're out in a bunch of wind like we are today. Uh, right now I have my cheapo external mic hooked up to the, the Canon video camera, which is the whole reason why you can hear me now. But now we got that out of the way, and we just go on to these two smaller ones. Now these are both Panasonic's. Uh, Panasonic camcorders are what I've used from the get-go. I've had three different ones now, and I just haven't had any problems with them. They're reasonably cheap, they're pretty durable considering the amount of abuse that I put them through, and they seem to last a long time. Now this Panasonic HCV550 was the one I've been using for the last three years. Now it's starting to get a little uh, twitchy, like when we hit the record button, sometimes it'll go out of record into pause without us noticing it. And because I was videoing a lot at the time, I thought, you know what, it'd be a good time to get a backup and an eventual replacement. So the second one on top here is an HCV180. And it is actually the replacement, I believe, for this video camera. But anyway, they both work fine. They both do exactly the same thing. They both have some of the similar features. And if you want to know all about these cameras, uh, go Google them or go on to Panasonic's website and take a peek. But these are the two that I use. Now when we're videoing, we don't go into the eye zoom. We use nothing but optical zoom and typically uh, video shots either at 30 power or 40 power, both optical zooms. Uh, we get a lot of good trace that way. It's just a lot clearer. You can do it in HD and it seems to come out all right. Okay, a couple years ago, Bob Carlock of Defensive Edge came up with this really cool gadget called the RLC Cam Cradle. And what he decided to have was some kind of a gadget that would hold a camcorder, a spotting scope, and a laser rangefinder, and have them all sync up on the same target at long range. So if you needed to move off of one target onto another, all you have to do is move the, the cam cradle, and all three pieces would go together. So typically what I do is I'll line up my spotting scope on the target, and then line up the camcorder on the same target as soon as I get out somewhere. So uh, before you even have an animal that you want to shoot and you get all set up, you just get this all lined up on one target, lock it all down, and when you see a deer or a bear or an elk or whatever, all you have to do is find it in the spotting scope, flip open the screen on your camcorder, and the video camera is going to be pointed at the, the animal as soon as you turn it on. It's a slick setup. And what this allows you to do is spot impacts with a spotting scope and video the whole thing at the same time. And if you need a solid platform to put a, a laser rangefinder on, you just slide it in this slot here and it actually takes a quarter twenty uh, wing nut screw where you can you know clamp it down if you want to, but you just slide it in there and line up on the target and it gives you a, I wouldn't say it's perfectly lined up on target, but it's pretty close and you have a tripod now to use as a stable platform to get an accurate range. I used to have good enough eyes and we used to shoot at animals close enough 
that I could do all my spotting right in this camcorder screen. But it's uh, <laughs> it's just not good enough for spotting hits on animals usually. So a couple of years ago, I decided that if we're going to be out hunting and we're going to be taking long shots, we're going to be using a spotting scope to make sure that we see the impact on the animal. So when we're long range hunting, this is what we use. We take both of these pieces with us and uh, spot for the shot and video at the same time. And the video actually started out as uh, not, not something that I would want to just show on YouTube or something like that. The video was actually an idea I had to video shots on animals and if something went wrong, I'd have something to go back and look at. So that's how it all started. Anyway, I did a full review on the cam cradle on the website at Pan Out Precision. I'll put the link in the video description box down below this video. Uh, at the same time, I'll put you know all the links that I can find at least, but you know, feel free to go out and Google this stuff. I'll put all the part numbers and the names and all that stuff of the tripods we use, as well as the, the camcorders and things like that. Okay, so when we set up to either spot trace for a shooter or video the shot, we try to get right over the top of the gun and look right over the top of the rifle with the spotting scope. And with the cam cradle, all you have to do is line up that spotting scope and the video cam will follow it. So uh, it's the easiest way to see as much trace as possible from the bullet as it heads to the target. So if you're a spotter and you're on the spotting scope and you're right over the shoulder like this, you'll literally be able to watch that shot all the way into the target. You'll know where it's gonna hit before it even gets to the target, which is kind of cool. But anyway, this is how we do it. We try to go right over the top of the gun. Sometimes we might offset right, offset left, whatever, just to kind of get different variety of trace. But typically we're right over the top of the rifle. And it's important to let the shooter get comfortable behind the rifle and get lined up on the target with natural point of aim before you start planning that tripod where the spotter is going to be. Uh, you know, it's the priority of the shot obviously is the shooter and making sure you can take the best shot possible. So make sure that your shooter gets all lined up and then adjust your tripod with the spotter and the camcorder after he's ready to go. But uh, typically all you have to do is, you know, it's just like natural point of aim with the rifle. You're going to look at the target, you're going to look down that rifle and you can make sure it's lined up and then you can put your tripod down and just shoot right over the top of it with the spot and scope. Uh, sometimes I'll play around with the magnification or the zoom on the camcorder, trying to get different levels of trace. And if you uh, pay attention to how high off the ground you are with the spotting scope, you can get a feel for what the trajectory of the bullet's going to do. So if you're shooting down across the canyon, you can be really low on that gun and just hold up, you know, what, a minute or two above the target and you probably get all of the trace. If you're shooting up, you probably aren't going to get all the trace unless you have the tripod really low to follow that trajectory. But on flat ground like this, uh, we usually put it about three feet up like Jake has it now so he can kneel down comfortably behind that spotting scope. Well, that does it for this edition of Straight Talk. This was all about the video cameras you use and the equipment that we use with them. I'll put uh, as many links as I can in the video description right below the video uh, title. So if you just want a quick hot link, go there. Make sure you check out the review on this cam cradle. If you do a lot of stuff like this, it is absolutely worth every penny you'll pay for it. Uh, I've had really good luck with it. It's an awesome little piece of kit. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.